Hey everyone, welcome back to my video blog where I talk about Azure, uh, data services, and a little bit of professional development. And today we're going to talk about the Azure Data Explorer service and how it fits within the Azure Data Platform overall, as well as why you might use it instead of say something like Synapse or Databricks, okay? So now kicking things off, what you should know about the product is that it's a fast and highly scalable data exploration platform as a service or PaaS service for log and telemetry data. Now, what it does is it helps collect data streams from modern software and devices like say websites and application and IoT sensors and kind of pretty much anything else you would stream data from, okay? Now, coming from those source systems, the data is typically used for things like diagnostics, monitoring, reporting, and those types of things. And then of course, you can run machine learning, data science, and other advanced analytics workloads using that data. It is used as like a backend service for things like Azure Log Analytics, um, Azure Application Insights, uh, Time Series Insights, Windows Defender, Advanced Threat Protection, and some others, right? And the way that it was developed, and it's, it's been going on for quite a while now, is really that it was actually born out of desire to run ad hoc queries on massive telemetry data streams provided by the Power BI service, believe it or not. Now, there wasn't something available at the time to look at how the services were doing and things like that. And so the team just built one and it became its own product you are able to ingest data from multiple places. So things like Event Grid, Event Hubs, IoT Hub, and Azure Data Factory can all send data into the Azure Data Explorer. But then external services like say Logstash or Kafka, Power Automate, right, which is not part of Azure, but part of the Power Platform. Uh, Spark, you know, so we've got, you know, Spark obviously within Synapse and you've got Spark um, on-prem, the open source Spark that you can run. You've got Databricks Spark. There's a lot of different iterations of Spark out there. And then there are other standard APIs like Java and REST APIs that are available. Now, as the data gets ingested, it is automatically indexed and compressed, taking advantage of column store compression technology. And then the data is sharded. When the data is sharded, it's, um, it helps to improve the performance uh, with that column order compression, and it's used across all of the compute resources. It also has things like auto scaling, uh, so you can spin up and down additional resources to be able to help run the queries against it. Um, and it also uses uh, a, a completely different query language called Custo or Custo Query Language, KQL. Now, think of this service as an add to rather than an instead of service like Synapse or Databricks from the architecture standpoint, right? So when you think about advanced analytics architectures or uh, modern data warehouse architectures and things like that, this plugs right in and can be used for additional workloads that maybe Synapse or Databricks aren't optimized for. You're not really gonna use it for things like business intelligence, though you could surface results into Power BI and other presentation tools but it's really more catered toward that log analysis and IoT type data. It can handle a variety of data, which is structured, unstructured, semi-structured, and, and basically it can parse across all those. It's gonna be optimized if the data is in some kind of a structured format, but you can uh, query across all of them. And the, the Custo query language is, is very forward thinking around analytics. So you can run original queries and then uh, for troubleshooting purposes, you can rerun just portions of the query and, and, and things like that. It's, a, it's actually a really neat way to approach these things. And there are a lot of analytical type operators that, that are native to the product that maybe you wouldn't have in something like SQL Server or something along those lines. Now, you know, again, as I mentioned, it's, it's probably going to be used in those very specific use cases as opposed to kind of taking 
over for a Synapse or a, a Databricks or any other um, data warehouse platform that you might use. So just kind of be mindful of what the use case is. There are some great tutorials out on the, the Microsoft documentation site uh, where you can kind of walk through and, and work with some varying types of data. And the uh, the documentation around the Kusto query language is, is quite robust as well. So definitely give a look at that. Otherwise, that's all I've got for today. Uh, appreciate you watching. Appreciate all the support. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, like this. Ask some questions about this. If you have questions, throw them in the comments below. I'll be sure to respond back as soon as I can to get you more information. Uh, and, and share the video with your friends. Again, everything helps. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.